It is a real pleasure to follow the member for Perth and North uh, Persia, and uh, I want to also congratulate my honourable friend, uh, the member for Kingston upon, upon Hull North, and the father of the House for securing this vitally important debate. Uh, my honourable friend and others have campaigned unstintingly for justice for the victims and their families, and I pay tribute to her perseverance and dedication. Mr Deputy Speaker, my constituent David Farugia first told me in 2015 of the absolutely appalling manner in which he and his family had been treated throughout this entire sorry affair. David and his siblings are part of the so-called fatherless generation. Their father was infected with the hepatitis virus in 1977 and with HIV in the mid-80s. He died in 1986 at the age of 37, and a week later David went into care, where he remained until he was 17. He was separated from his twin brother for three years and from his youngest brother for 13 years. David wasn't reunited with his other brothers until 2008 and 2010. They've also lost two uncles in this terrible scandal. Their story, the trauma of losing their father in horrific circumstances, of ending up separated in the care system, and the stigma they've lived, lived with, is deeply harrowing. Sadly, their story is not unique, and many of those infected by the, affected by the infected blood scandal have similarly tragic stories to tell. Lord Robert Winston described the scandal as the worst treatment disaster in the history of the NHS. But the scandal and the suffering caused has been compounded by the length of time it's taken victims and their families to receive justice. This weight has had a profound effect on David's mental health, and yet he continues to fight for justice like so many others. I pay tribute to David, who is in the public gallery today, and to all the victims and their families for their tireless campaign. It's been difficult, but they have never given up. But let's be clear. This has taken far too long. Thousands have already died, and with each passing day, more and more are lost without receiving the justice that they deserve. Justice delayed is justice denied, and every day that we wait is a day more that that justice is denied. Sir Brian recommended in the second interim report that children of those infected should be admitted to the payment scheme. That report was published in April. But families like the Farugias are still waiting to hear about being admitted to the scheme. The Government must act without delay to allow that those, those who are now eligible to receive in the interim con compensation payments to register with the existing infected blood scheme. Delaying this only prolongs their anguish. Sir Brian has also recommended that an arm's length body be established to administer the compensation scheme. This work needs to begin as soon as possible. So will the Minister update the House and these families on where the Government is in setting up and appointing a chair? Mr Deputy Speaker, time is of the essence. We simply cannot wait for the final report in the autumn for the Government to respond. Sir Brian has made it clear that the scheme need not wait, await that final report in order to begin its work and that the structure of the scheme should be set up as soon as possible and before the final report of the inquiry. This scandal has caused decades of suffering, health issues, financial loss and stigma for those affected, as we have heard so powerfully from all of the contributions made from members across the House today. The wait for justice has already gone on for far too long. <coughs> My constituents, along with all the victims, and their families deserve better than endless delays. They deserve to see justice delivered, and they deserve to see it delivered now.